We're taking a look around my sewing room. Let's jump into it. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Elizabeth from ElizabethMadeThis.com and I am here to share lots of tips and tutorials and inspiration and my makes and all kinds of fun stuff to help you sew quick, so confidently and so creatively. If that's up your alley, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. As you can see, I'm not in my usual vlogging corner. I am in my sewing room and I thought I would do a different kind of video today and just kind of take you around my creative space so we'll check it out together and yeah let me know what you think about it this is my room i spent a lot of time here i'm in my basement and so this is just kind of an overview of my room right here you can see it's got like this really cool ceiling that we painted when we first moved in here um this is just I, I've done so much work in here to just make this a nice, bright, and happy, and cheerful place. And I'm going to take you now around all of the different places and all my different, my different squirrel holes for all of my sewing stuff. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm starting on my wall here. I've, I've got lots of different little bits of art. Um, I've got this very funny, this very funny picture from a, a vintage pattern catalog talking about grading down seam allowances or something like that. It was just a really cute graphic. And then also some other stuff that my husband has got me. This is my eighth grade self-portrait of myself. I of course thought it was a great idea to make a screwy face. Youth. <laughs> I did spend a month on my hair, so I'm, I still love my hair, even now. It's a piece of fabric that I found that was really cool. And then uh, up here is a, a vintage pattern that, uh, that a sewing friend gave me and it actually works really well within the, the scheme of my, of my color scheme in here. I've got my couch. We, we, we recovered this a couple of years ago, my husband and I. It's, it's a, um, it used to be navy blue and it's just a nice cozy spot to hang out and read and whatnot. Um, and then I've got this, this other picture that I got found at the thrift store, I think it's the, the Alexander McQueen um, butterfly dress. So that's always nice and fun and inspirational to look at. And then I've got over here my kids table. So, so this is a table that uh, used to be like a, like a hexagon table, like one of, or one of those trapezoid tables that you see in classrooms. And I found it at the thrift store and repainted the edges and then I decoupaged it with I decoupaged it with the back side of vintage patterns. So there's vintage patterns and then pictures from the vintage patterns. So it's just a really fun kind of table. Um, I used to have this table when I was growing up that was covered in all kinds of different art surface art materials, just glue and paint and all kinds of stuff and I always loved that table and so I wanted to have it like a nice little space for my kids to just come and hang out in the sewing room and draw or just work on whatever they wanted to work on in here. So this is for my kids. Where I have my, my dress form. Uh, this I, I just got her recently. This is Regina after my gram. She is the one who's started me sewing and I think that she would be very proud of me and so I wanted to name her after my grandma. Um, so there's that and then I've got all of my zippers. I've color coordinated them and they're actually they're actually further subdivided into into invisible zippers and nylon zippers and they're on shots this is a shower curtain rod and they're on little rings and then on the rings they're they're hooked to the shower curtain rings with safety pins so they're pinned through on the tops on the, on the bottom sides of the zippers and then through the through the little rods but i find this is a really really easy way to see all of my zippers and um, just just find everything by by color um, and then i've got my circa 1960 dressmaker machine which is not workable at the moment but she's so pretty she's so pretty it's a straight stitch and a zigzag 
Um, and I also have below it, below it, I've got the Singer 221 from 1948 that is actually my husband's grandmother's machine and uh, the the table the table that it's above it is the the table that uh, the singer is actually made for um, we have to modify it if, to put the dressmaker in there eventually i would really love to get the dressmaker uh operable so i could kind of pit them against each other and just kind of do a do a test because the singer has really really great straight stitch but it also doesn't handle bulk very well. So if you're if you're doing jeans, it's really annoying because you come to an, a seam intersection and it doesn't want to go over the 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 seam intersection. It just kind of like dies. And so you've got to hand crank hand crank the 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 flywheel, which is just really irritating. But it does make an absolutely beautiful uh, straight stitch. So I would really love to see how the dressmaker fares against that. The dressmaker does have the added advantage of having a zigzag stitch, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And then coming over to my bookcase area, I've got books, sewing books. So I have all of my thread in these little in these in these tackle boxes. Um, so there's actually they're actually subdivided in there, and they're in little smaller paper boxes. Um, grouped by color so it's again it's really easy and fast for me to go and find whatever thread I need and I have all of my bobbins up on the top little little rack and then there's all of my threads and there it's it's two layers deep of, of um, thread and so I tend to whenever thread is on sale I tend to just buy really any color that I think that I might want um, just so that I always have a selection and then below it I just have I just have music um, from my other life as a musician. Here on my sewing table, I've got my Janome Cover Pro 2000. Uh, this is my cover stitch machine and I love it. It's It's been a year since I've had it and it's just a really, it's just a treat. I'm gonna have to do another video where I kind of just walk through all the, the cool stuff that it does. Um, and then at the end of this table, I have just a, just a rolling chair from Ikea. Uh, so behind everything, I've got my my second bookcase. I've got some sewing art above it, recordings, and then the biggest thing that I love on this shelf is my button collection. So I have my buttons in in little ball jars behind it, and they are they are they are subdivided into sorted by color and I think this is just a really fast and easy way to find to, to find buttons um, you really can sort buttons you know really any way you want to but I think for me I think in color this is like the theme of my room and how just I organize stuff and I find stuff so much faster in these little jars versus just a big giant pile of buttons um, and then I've got my my main machine which is my just really basic Janome. This thing has been with me for almost 11 years now and she is just a workhorse really just works so well. I've got a little sew city table you've seen it in my my other videos. Um, it's just a it's a it's a basic machine it's got 30 stitches I end up using I mean really just the straight stitch, the zigzag, and the buttonhole probably 98% of the time. So all the other stitches I don't really need. So it's really, it's kind of funny, you know, all these big fancy computerized machines and then you only end up using like three or four stitches. But I mean, it's it's good to know when I, you know, whenever this one finally, finally dies, um, which she's really showing zero signs of doing anytime soon, um, it'll, it'll be interesting to kind of just keep that keep that in mind that that you know the bulk of my sewing is just really you know those three stitches ultimately behind it behind my machine I've got my zipper can organizers which I've done in another video and I have all of my various tools in here so I've got I've got one with markers one with a little compass and uh, buttonhole tools I've got another one for my my tube turners and actually some some of my some of my things are a little bit out of organized too. I've got as I got zipper nippers and uh, little pliers that I use periodically for stuff, pencils, pens, 
uh, you name it, it's in there. And I love these little these little zipper can organizers. They're just so handy for for stuff. I also have jars for my for my 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 machine needles too, and those just help me keep my keep my machine needles in in sorted and just in one spot. So whenever I need to to change and grab the right needle, you can see on my light. Um, this is my my very simple way to keep my my zip my needles in check. Whatever whatever needle I have in my machine at the moment, I put right here at the bottom of my light. So I know that right now I've got I've got a stretch needle in there, and when I need to go change my needle, I will put a different. If say if I was using my twin stretch, I would put that there. And that way I would know that's what's there and so I don't get my, my needles confused. Uh, also I have I've got I've got two more jars for my for my labels. And these are just these are this one these ones were from, from Wonder Label and the other ones are from Dutch Label Shop. Both of these companies I think are totally comparable and they make great labels. And then coming over here my very basic Janome 7034D uh, Magnolia Serger. It is a workhorse. <laughs> it's it's a basic home machine, but it just it's it's been through it. It's it's just really reliable and just a really nice machine. Um, my sewing table, you can see, like it used to be like super brown, um, and recently I wallpapered it with my mom. And I really like it. This is a basement room, so it just doesn't have a lot of light in it. And I think the the white, the white wallpaper um, with the wood grain kind of finish makes it just kind of just updated it a whole lot. And then I've got another one of these IKEA chairs. And then over in the corner, all of my my scissors are just on a magnetic strip. That is just a really handy place to put them. I've got a big giant light because again more light in the basement is better. This one, this is like a needle point that I found at the thrift store for like three dollars. I was like so upset that somebody had thrown this out. It's just really a beautiful piece and I think it's just really funky and cool. Um, and then some kind of sewing, simple sewing themed little, little pictures there. So I've got my one window in the my basement room here and on the window I tend to keep to keep it pretty clean. I do have a basket right here that I have a just I keep works in progress slash uh, just just rainy day projects. My pegboard, my pegboard's got uh, all my rulers on it and also hammers and uh, measuring tapes and just other general stuff I've got I've got my brayer on there for when I do block printing okay so right now too I've got my 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 cutting table this is it's a it's just a big dining room table and my husband has added little little blocks to raise it up a little bit so that it's at my hip height and then I have a big giant cutting mat a big rotary cutting mat this is something that I got for Christmas and it has been like such a wonderful wonderful thing uh, it's it's almost it's like 40 I think it's 40 inches by almost almost six feet the the table the table itself is 48 inches by six by 72 inches approximately so it's a little bit short on either side but but for the the width of any given length of fabric like this is this is a really great great mat it's been so wonderful to just be able to take my rotary cutter and just put it anywhere whether i'm doing pattern work or messing around with cutting fabric okay and then on my cutting table besides having some burdas that i'm working on currently i have a, a just a bag and it has all of my pattern weights in it so these are just washers that I so there's there are two two washers deep from Home Depot. They're super cheap. They were at like ten cents or something like that for a couple of them. And then these are the, the smaller size ones. And then I just wrap them with random pieces of fabric and ribbon and bias tape and just use a glue gun to put them in place. And yeah, they they're wonderful. And my kids love playing with them. And I don't mind because they're super cheap and very very useful. 
Um, and then I've got a teapot in the corner because I'm obviously, I'm always having tea in here. So this is my ironing station. I've got my ironing board and uh, my iron, obviously. And then on the wall, I've just got some more art. On the wall, I've got some more art, and there's also a just a it's a it's a seam roll. It's it's a seam roll, uh, but it's, it's wood, so it's really nice to get into to long to long seams like like when you're working with jeans or something like that. And I can just press right over. It's got a nice curved curved face to it, and it just hangs on a little nail on the wall. And then on the wall, there is an, a little organizer that's got just various tools. There's a a broken spatula that I use for pressing in really weird places. I've got this assortment of strips of strips of cardboard. These are these from the file folders that I just showed you. So they're all marked. Um, so this is five eighths inch wide. So anytime I need a five eighths inch seam, I can or not seam a hem that I can just I can just grab that and then use this as a as a guide to to press up my hem, press up my hem, and accurate. An accurate thing and also because it's, it's cardboard I can I can press over this and with no problem I steam them all the time <laughs> if they get a little too warped or weird then I can just cut a new one and that's no big deal um, so I've got them all widths that's one and a quarter this one is huge it's like two inches I use it for curtains no silk organza press cloth there's also a flannel press cloth in there there is corduroy scraps for if I'm doing corduroy so I don't ruin the nap of that. There's also random <clears throat> uh, just bandana too that I use for nefarious craft purposes because sometimes uh, there's something that like might have a lot of adhesive uh, or if I've, if I've got a, a fabric that maybe has a little bit of dye I'm not quite sure about then I will go and grab that. In my little organizer I always keep my steam seam. I would die without steam seam. It's amazing. <laughs> Um, I hoard it. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lint roller in here. I got it. I have iron cleaner. Um, there's also a glue stick for the times that I'm doing like a collar or something like that, and it or, or a waistband. And I would just want to just want to press it into place before I go ahead and top stitch it. So I keep all of these things kind of there. And then a spray bottle, handy, super handy. I've got a little basket that has my my ham, my pressing ham, and a bigger a sleeve roll, and also a uh, a tailor's clapper that's connected to the you know the the pressing thingy for pressing collars and stuff like that to get nice clean edges. So all of those are there. So this is my fabric closet. You've seen it before in my when I my I was organizing my closet. I've actually since put in a rug underneath of it. I actually sanded that this down so that so that there was like no chance of any stain that might have been on this rack at some point because this is a, a repurposed wine rack. I sanded it down so that there's no chance of, of it staining my fabric um, at some point. And then I've got my custom rack that my husband built for me. Uh, again, that I showed in my fabric organization video. And then up above it, I have my, my knit scraps all in baskets and then in the corner there's water for my iron and also just a, a little there's envelopes for my for my patterns that I'm making and there's starch and there's also just a big plastic bin organizer with elastics and trims and just various little notion things um, and then I've got I have wovens Mostly, mostly quilting cottons in in this area, and then up above, uh, up above the the little the little orb organizer are sweaters that need to be refashioned. There's deep stash fabric in here, stuff that's like really really nice that I have just not gotten around to. Stuff that's just really special, whatever. That's in this bin. There's a, there's some silk in there. There's the vintage wool. Uh, there's really great wool in there. These are my linings and also lingerie fabrics. And then, and on this side, on this side of the corner, there is, there's fabric for muslin and just random, random stuff like a, this polar fleece. 
it'll be a jacket at some point um yeah just stuff i use for muslins got a nice mirror for fitting which hello hi tripod what's going on and then i've got an organizer for actually my just my kids my kids kind of stuff they have They've got a drawer of felt that they can use for whatever crafting purposes they really want to use it for. And then I have a filing cabinet and this is primarily where I store all of my patterns. My pattern organization is not fancy by any means. It's just really simple. I tend to take, I, I cut out a pattern and uh, I put it in, in a manila envelope when I'm done with it. And I just, I have everything organized by kind of category. So there's, there's a file for blouses, for like aprons and kind of just casual things and dresses and so on and so forth. And a lot of times, especially if I know if I'm going to make the pattern again, I will go ahead and make a, just make a quick line drawing of, of whatever it is that I'm and then I'm putting on there and button down top I use it for pajamas um, etc and so I'll just make a really quick rough line drawing sometimes they're good sometimes they're not but it's just enough to kind of give me an idea of what's in there occasionally I have a few envelope patterns but most of them are either pdfs or things that I've traced my interfacing box so in my interfacing box is lots of random stuff <laughs> There's, uh, there's Dacron. This I use for upholstery. Um, and sometimes home deck work. There's muslin bits in here. What is there? Heat and bond. Awesome for appliques. There's hair canvas for tailoring. And then my favorite everyday, uh, interfacing this is from peggy savers this is her fusible interfacing um it's this this is not my favorite fusible interfacing actually my favorite interfacing interfacing is from fashion sewing supply but um it's a little bit more expensive so i find that peggy savers the the interfacing that she sells and silhouette patterns is is really it's almost as good as the fashion sewing supply stuff and it's it's considerably like less money like it was $27.50 for five yards which will last me a long time so I've got it in white and black for various things and then I've got Salvi too which I occasionally use for embroidery work uh, but that's my interfacing box. So you can on the bottom side of my cut table so underneath my cut table you can see actually you can see first off I put, I have, I've got a tape measure that's glued onto, onto my table that's really fast and easy for me to help when I, whenever I need to ascertain like how much of a given fabric I have, I can just go ahead and use my, use my measure, my measuring tape that's right there on the table. And also at the edge of this, I have a little guide for measuring the stretch, the stretch of a given fabric. So this is just something that you can make really quick and easy with, um, you know, I just use it just with paper, honestly. And I just measured stuff out in centimeters. So, you know, I grab 10 centimeters worth of fabric. And then if it, you know, stretches to, to 11, then it is, then it's, you know, 10% and so on and so on and so forth, just to, it's a quick way for me to, to see how much stretch of fabric a, a fabric has. So underneath my table, I have all of these little, these little Samsonite training cases. These are all vintage and I've recovered them with uh, fabric, with paper, with um, actually a shopping bag in this case. But inside them, I have various different notions. So this one has has snaps and buttons and tack buttons, and uh, they're all in various little things. I've got snap cutters in here, um, and a little a little pounding block for when I'm doing work with tack buttons and also rivets. This one has serger thread in it, as just other random little things. I've got my rotary blades in here. This one has lots of lots of zippers so this is zipper by the yard I've got snaps in here I've also got lots of vintage 
uh, Rick Rack and seam binding. This is another rainy, rainy day project box. So these are all zipper bags that are cut and ready to go for any time that I want to make some zipper bags. I make a lot of zipper bags for my Operation Christmas Child boxes. So um, whenever I have just random scraps of woven fabrics, I will cut them up with it with a zipper and just put them in this in this in this box. Um, I think I have about like 15 that are ready to go here for just any day that I want to do this. Uh, that is my 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 big patterns my big pattern boxes so these are all of my October patterns in here and then all of my my jolly patterns too so these are these are there um, so they're ready for me to trace whenever I need them and I have them in these boxes as opposed to the filing cabinet because I use them a lot more so they're just out there and just more accessible for me, but also because um, they're too wide to fit in a standard, a standard filing cabinet. This is my cushion. I take this to my sewing group when I go because it's nice and soft and we just have standard, standard metal chairs so they're not super comfortable. But it's also a nice cover for these boxes because my daughter likes to get in them and pull things out of them. And this other box has all of my all of my burdas in there. Um, and the same deal. I use them all the time so they're here and they're, they're also just kind of too wiggly to put in any kind of other situation. So those are my burdas. And then the other last thing I've got just uh, this might be more functional storage. I really haven't figured out a way to use it properly yet. I don't really know how I want to use it quite yet, even though it's been here a while. <laughs> um, I primarily use it to hold my bobbin winder, um, and there's just some random muslin for whenever I need to use muslin. And also, the big, the main thing that I use this for is for my my elastics. So these are all the elastics that I use like pretty frequently. Um, so there's foldover elastic in here and also just twill tape and just, just kind of, yeah, random, random things that I use all the time. Uh, Pico elastic, um, yeah, all of, all of my elastics that I use, that I use frequently. Um, and then there's, there's a little bit of tie interfacing, which I use for easing sleeve caps and jackets. Um, so it's more random notions, Ben but the, also the stuff that I use, that I use really frequently. And that is the underside of my table. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Happy sewing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends.